Hello, everybody. I am Matteo Andreottola. I am a structural engineer. I am, of course, uh, as well part of uh, Rotoblast and in particular Rotoschool. Uh, what is Rotoschool, first of all? Rotoschool is a part of Rotoblast taking care of uh, the formation of uh, internal people, but also external people. So we make courses and seminars uh, every year for uh, people interested in the, in the timber uh, sector, basically. We have, for example, this year almost 120 courses uh, around the world, internationally, in seven different languages. And uh, we decided as well to do these uh, video lessons. Uh, these are for us very important. We'll have nine video lessons uh, this year, uh, free of, uh, of charge for everybody, because we think that uh, uh, timber is a great material to work with, uh, has some uh, great potential and characteristics, uh, structural characteristics and also beauty, of course. Uh, but it is a material that if you want to use, uh, you want you have to design in the right way, uh, just uh, uh, to avoid issues of durability, uh, to have the right connections in your buildings, uh, and so on and so forth. So we uh, placed uh, nine video lessons uh, about the nine uh, hottest topics we think this year, and uh, uh, let's see how it goes. So first of all, I wanted as well to introduce a little bit what uh, Rotoblast is. Rotoblas uh, is a company based uh, in the north of Italy. In fact, I'm speaking to you at the moment uh, from uh, uh, Cortaccia, which is a little town uh, from in between uh, Trento and uh, Bolzano, in the middle of the, the Dolomites, uh, very close to, to Lake Garda, if you're not from uh, Italy. So a very beautiful part uh, of, uh, of Italy. Uh, you can see as well from the image here where all of our uh, subsidiaries are located all over the world, because we are actually working all over the world, close to where, <laughs> to where you are. We have uh, six uh, main lines, uh, and these are the, um, the screws, for example, screws for, for wood, the plates, uh, the tools, uh, the soundproofing, uh, the full protection and safety, the tapes, sealant uh, and uh, uh, membranes uh, for, the ear for the air tightness and uh, waterproofing. This is why we have an alpine heart, but an international spirit, because we are located right in uh, the middle of the Dolomites, uh, but uh, we are as well present and located all over the world with our subsidiaries. As you can see here, we are more than uh, 400 uh, uh, workers in Rotoblas at the moment. Actually, we are almost 500 uh, as we speak, because we, are, we keep on growing and growing. And uh, if, if, uh, as you can see here, but we're going to discuss more in detail also in the video lessons, also this particular mass timber structure here, we just recently finished the, uh, the construction of this massive and very nice uh, automatic uh, mass timber warehouse that we have here in our headquarter of, uh, of Rotoblas. And this will, uh, and actually has already doubled uh, the uh, existing warehouse space that we have in uh, in Rotoblast. So for us, uh, it's uh, practice what you preach. We uh, preach with our Roto schools around the world uh, to use timber, and also for our own project, uh, we use timber. Uh, the use of, of, of wood and of timber structure, of course, for us is very important for, as you all know, uh, a sustainability point of view, very, very important. And uh, um, this is why uh, we preach also the use of this kind of uh, uh, material, structural material in this sense. But of course, as you'll know, uh, timber is a material that uh, a lot of people are passionate about, and uh, myself, I'm the first one to be passionate about it. And uh, second of all, it has a lot of uh, very, very good uh, structural characteristics uh, that we'll see throughout uh, the video lessons. And this is why a lot of people love timber, not only because of its beauty, but also because of uh, sustainability and great performance, really. Uh, what are these video lessons that we're going to do this year? There are nine of them, actually. We start with the, the potential of CLT and mass timber, actually. Then we'll go for durability of timber structure and corrosion resistance uh, for outdoor solutions, waterproofing and airtightness of timber structures, the acoustic in timber constructions, the fire design in timber structures, the seismic design, the composite structure or hybrid structure, a very hot topic nowadays to optimize the use of timber, 
the innovative connections for timber structures, and last but not least, uh, the installation of full rest system. Thank you very much, and thank you for your attention. Hello everybody, my name is Filippo Riviera and I'm a technical consultant here in Rotoblast. My job is to help designers to find solutions with our products. And uh, today we're going to talk about waterproofing and airtightness. So, as you can see, we can uh, start looking at uh, what is a building envelope. This concept that it's uh, rather good to have it. Uh, air tightness and wind tightness, of course. Vapor diffusion and condensation, that's uh, also because we're uh, dealing with timber structure. That's a very big problem if you're going to have some. And then we're going to look at some materials, tapes and membrane. But first of all, I wanted to ask you, have you ever bought a house? Have you ever looked into a house? And uh, what normally, what do you think when you want to buy a house? Well, I was asking my girlfriend and uh, she wanted to have a good view, of course. She wanted to have the sun. She wanted to have big, big windows as well. And of course, the location is essential. But really, what I wanted to say today is that we should look also at the build-up. So actually, we want to have a comfortable house. And comfortable, it doesn't mean only to have comfortable furniture, but it's really important. We need to have a very good build-up, not to have air leakage or noise coming inside or heat going on the outside or heat coming inside, depending on where we live. So that's why I want to start with the building envelope. So what you see here is a, is a village in uh, Greenland. And why am I putting a village in Greenland? Well, that's because, of course, if you like nature, that's a very good landscape. Uh, but really, what is important here is that uh, the people inside want to have comfort as well. And they have to have very good thermal insulation, because in Greenland winter is winter, for real. But also they need to have protection, protection from the weather, of course, but not only, because just uh, good to remind that we're not on top of, uh, you know, the animal chain. In Greenland there is the polar bear and they walk in the winter through these houses, so it's a shelter, it's our protection. Starting from this, we go back in time and we're going to look at what is the origin of the building envelope. Because at first, we, as humans, we were trying some, to find some protection, that's for sure. And we wanted to have protection from the rain, from the weather itself. So what's perfect is to have a cave, so we have a natural roof. But of course, then we have a roof and part of the walls, but we have an open space in front. And what we wanted to have is protection from predators. Predators, back in the days, they, they were very lions, wolves, technical salesmen from Rotoblast trying to sell you some, to give you some catalogs, very dangerous animals, these ones. But as you can see, people, humans, were habitating these caves for 20,000 years, so quite a long time, and they were trying to make it comfortable. So what they were seeking was protection from the weather, protection from predators, and I guess they really wanted to have also comfortable houses, so they were implementing different materials, and I'm sure timber was one of them. But then, what's going to happen, maybe, in the future? Maybe it's the first time, maybe not, that you see this image here, from uh, the Toronto Tree Tower in Canada. Uh, that's a prefabricated CLT composition, so that's maybe the future. But if you look close at this image, you're going to see trees on the balconies and as you know trees they have roots and roots they have to be really close to humid grass and water so that's going to be a humid environment and for sure humidity close to timber is not a good deal so we need to take care of that and also probably we want to have very comfortable houses in these beautiful natural timber houses but here of course we're going to seek protection from the weather protection from the animals we're going to have also some look at the heat loss because we want to have efficient houses in the future. We need to have efficient houses in the future. Noise propagation, that's essential. How many people can live in uh, uh, 4,500 square meters? 
it's a lot of apartments. And also then we need to prevent moisture traveling from uh, into the timber, so into the structural element. Now we're gonna, I wanted to just have a look on what's the state of the heart. So basically we have that, uh, this is uh, from a um, scientist, uh, Joseph Tsiburek, sorry for the pronunciation, a Canadian uh, uh, scientist uh, that uh, I, I was just looking at the website and I found very interesting material. So there is also the link here, but uh, also the name of the, of the site. Uh, buildingsize.com corporation. So what's the state of the heart really? We can see here that we have our structural material which is very close to some layers and uh, we're gonna call them, well, we have the vapor, we have the thermal insulation and we have the thrust pier. This is the control layer. So in, with these layers we want to control moisture traveling, air going from one side to the other, we want to control the thermal loss and going uh, on the left to this, we have the ventilation. The ventilation is really good in this case because we're talking of, uh, about the perfect wall. This is the perfect ideal wall, uh, the wall that is working anywhere. So uh, in Greenland, for example, but also in Central Africa. We have the ventilation then. We have the ventilation. This is essential to take care of uh, moisture. And then we have the cladding. So looking at the water protection, the cladding is the first surface that is going to block the water, the rain, from the outside to go inside the building. But then uh, we're gonna see also, we use membranes and tapes. Membranes, they are the vapor and the thrust pier. The vapor is the vapor control layer and vapor is just the family names for our products. The thrust pier, they are highly breathable membranes. So what's the goal here? The goal, is to keep the structural element, our timber, on the warm side. So we want to keep it warm, which prevents condensation. We don't want our timber to rotten because of you know, natural events, getting wet and then mushroom can start growing again and we can have a mechanical decay. So timber structurally losing strength. So to avoid that, we want to keep it warm and we want to keep it dry. We want to control the moisture that is going from the inside to the outside. And well, I'm saying this because I live in a part of the world where this is the case most of the time, but this is really dependent on where you live. If you're living in the Alps, because Rotoblast is located in the heart of the Alps, of the Dolomites, here we have winter and during winter people tend to live more inside than outside. That means that we're gonna create moisture. Also in Italy, we are cooking a lot of pasta every day. So that's also moisture going into our, in, inside our house. Well, believe it or not, we want to keep the inside inside the house. And we want to keep the outside outside. So that's why we need to prevent moisture to travel in our buildup. We need to control at least the moisture going from the inside to the outside. Then we need to also control the temperature because we don't want to lose temperature fast. And that's just also because of sustainability reasons. And then we want to protect our thermal insulation because we want it to work well. So that's why we also need breathable membrane that it's waterproof. So there is no water going from the outside to the inside, but there is moisture going from the inside. So from the thermal layer to the outside. Well, and this is the perfect wall. And uh, the perfect wall, as you can see now, I'm just uh, drawing it differently and uh, I'm putting colors. So the gray one is the structural element. Then we have the control layers. The, well, the red one is actually uh, the vapor. Then the blue one is the breathable. And then we have the ventilation and cladding. If you're convinced about the perfect wall, then we can go and look what it's going to be if you're going to flip them. So flipping them, we're going to have then the perfect floor if you flip it on the left and we're going to have the perfect roof if you're going to flip it on the right. For the roof, the, clad is, the cladding is on the outside. We have ventilation and then we have all the control layer and then we have our structure elements. 
The same goes for the floor. So now that we have the perfect wall and the perfect elements for our CLT structure, and I'm talking about CLT, but this can be also timber frame, can be just timber structure, but can be any kind of structure, really. Now that we have it, we have the three components, the main components, so we can have the perfect house. But well, our perfect house, need, we need to do something more to achieve, to have a comfortable house. And this is what we have to do. We need to connect each color to, it, to the other, so to have a conformity, to have a, something that is not leaking somewhere. We don't want to have openings between membranes. So what we can do, well, we have our perfect wall, we have our perfect roof, we need to place tape between these two elements, this, between these two membranes, for example. Uh, between the timber, well, we need to put connectors. We need to put screw, plates, maybe also re epoxy, resin. But then, going also on a bit more on the outside, we have the vapor. We need to put tape between membranes. We have thermal uh, insulation. Well, we need to put thermal insulation in continuity. It has to be no bridge, thermal bridge over there. And then we need to place also our wind barrier, so our blue layer also tape over there. And this is essential for the, for the, to have at the end uh, efficient and comfortable house. And then of course the cladding is, and ventilation is something that it's, uh, of course, uh, the final choice, what we're gonna see. It's going to be our water protection, but really the material here can be very, very different. We're gonna talk now about air tightness and wind tightness. Air tightness, and well, in the image here, maybe you recognize it, is the blower door test. So what we want to achieve here, we want to test the efficiency of our work. And it's not only about correct detailing here, so it's uh, the engineer, the architect, the designer that has to implement good details. But really important here is also the implementation, so the application of the products. And this makes a huge difference. So we're going to start uh, with the air tightness and uh, briefly just to introduce it why we want to have this kind of membranes and tapes. Well, what we want to achieve is to have no wind coming inside. Have you ever stayed in a restaurant close to the door or the front door and then people continuously going in and outside and maybe outside is winter? That's not a comfortable dinner at the restaurant, right? So we want to avoid wind coming in. We want to avoid moisture traveling between compartments and but also into the timber, so into the main structural element. We want to have also, well, heat regulation. We want to uh, not to lose any heat during the winter because we don't want to, well, spend that much money on this. We can also be more sustainable uh, doing a very good thermal insulation. On the other hand, if it's summer and we're cooling our environment inside, we don't want the warm, uh, warm air coming inside. So we need to block also in this way. And then of course, something that is really important is to seal well around windows, or around doors, and, and that's mainly because of the sound propagation. Sound can propagate, can travel uh, with air, and then it's coming inside your house. So imagine if you're living close to an airport, that's a lot of noise. And you can do something about it, and you should just pay attention at these little details, as we're going to see. Then we have the air tightness layer, which is the red one in the image. And it's the internal layer. And this is not something that you should, uh, you should use. You can use different materials to achieve uh, this goal, the air tightness layer. But it's really important, as we were saying, to have continuity. So you can use USB, you can use plaster, you can use, of course, membranes, you can use plasterboard, but it's essential to tape between. Otherwise, it's going to have, I will call them natural cracks. And these cracks between panels, for example, this opening is going to allow the air leakage. So that's really important to seal. Same, exactly the same concept goes for the wind 
tetanus layer. But this one is the blue one in the figure and is, is not allowing the air coming from the outside to the inside and is blocking it to protect also the thermal insulation. But it's exactly the same concept. It's really important to have continuity in the layer, so it's really important to put tapes and seal well between the conjunction. conjunction. Now we're going to talk about vo uh, vapor diffusion and condensation, because this topic is really relevant, especially for timber houses. Well, you can see in the image here, yeah, you have to imagine that on the left on the image is uh, the house and this part of the roof is on the outside. And what we're going to see, we can see actually condensation. We can see water drops on the timber element. And we can also see mold a bit farther, closer to the end of the roof. So this was actually after the first winter uh, that uh, the people were living inside this house. Well, they just forgot to put the tape between the wall and the roof and around the, the beam. In this, uh, and they had really good membranes inside, which is probably worst in this case, because the membranes are doing a very good job protecting all the surface. So the humidity that we are creating inside has no way to go inside the walls. Uh, but it's condensating, it's concentrating in just this little gap. So we have all the moisture going into a little gap, creating bigger damage. So what is vapor diffusion? Would like to explain you very, very briefly. Uh, we have actually the outside and the inside, and we need to imagine it's a winter day. So it's cold outside. And what we're going to have, we're going to have actually that outside is drier than inside. So the moisture want to travel from the inside to the outside. And of course, you need to go through our layout. We have temperature inside the buildup. We have different materials with different surface temperatures. And uh, going on the outer layer, then we're going to have cold layer. So our cladding is going to be same temperature as outside, so co very cold. Uh, internal surface is going to be warm as the inside of the house. But between, we have a range. And here, it's really important also to talk about the dew point, because the dew point is the point where we have enough humidity in the air at the right temperature to have condensation. So we have these two characteristics, temperature and relative humidity. And at some point, we're going to have water drops. And we need to control the specific dew point. So we need to control where we're going to have condensation, because we're going to have it for sure. So we talk now about condensation. Condensation can be reached uh, by mainly two ways. Increasing the humidity in uh, one specific space or decreasing the temperature, keeping uh, constant the, the moisture level. These two scenarios have the same effect. We're going to have water drops, so vapor becoming water. And this is true if you think uh, about, well, a very hot summer day and you're really thirsty, coming back from home, from work, and then uh, you grab a beer from the fridge. So you open the fridge and your beer inside is just cold, but it's also dry. So there is no water drops on the beer. But then you take it, you put it on the table and you open it and then you forgot something and then you come back and you see actually water drops on the table and water drops all over the bottle. That's because the humidity in the room, that before it was no condensation because it was really warm, but in contact with cold surface creates water drops. That's exactly what's a, what's a, well, that's exactly a condensation example. Another example, as in the figure here, we can think about the room as a glass. So we have a glass and we have a certain level of water if we keep the same level of water, but we lower the temperature, it's like lowering the edge of the glass. So at some point, the edge is going to be lower than the surface of the water, so we're going to have water coming out, so water drops. But well, what it's really important to know is that timber and condensation, they don't work well together. Unfortunately, or well, 
that's part of the game, but timber is a natural element, uh, so it has natural decay process. And in contact with water, we're going to have mushrooms and mold growing on timber, they start in decomposing the timber. So it's actually bad to have it. But for the superficial condensation, the one that we're looking now in the pictures, this is actually easy to spot. So at least you know that you have a problem and you can take care of it. So we were saying that uh, we need to control the location where we, go, uh, we are going to have actually condensation, so the dew point. And uh, we can do that through, well, uh, common knowledge or traditional knowledge, but also we can use tools like uh, software. Ubacus is a free one, good to use, or Woofy ana analyzing buildups, for example. And uh, what we can do is to put our material with the, the correct SD value, with the correct thickness, and then we can evaluate in a specific location if that buildup is working well or not. So here we have actually wrong and correct positioning. The wrong positioning has the thermal insulation on the warm side. So what does it mean? We have here that the big um, the structural element, this one, is actually, it can be timber, it can be masonry, it can be any kind of material really. But we have here, uh, we have the inside and here we have the outside. So if we have the inside, where is it? Here we go. Here we have the inside and here we have the outside. On the inside we are creating moisture and the moisture is going between our buildup all the way to the outside. And, uh, but our structural element is on the cold side because the thermal insulation is between the inside and the structural element. What does it mean? It means that our structural element at some point is going to be very cold and at least cold enough to have condensation. So that's really bad because our condensation is exactly into the timber. We want to avoid that. That's why the correct positioning is to have the structural element on the warm side. In that way, the moisture, of course, is going to travel, but it's never going to reach condensation because the temperature is always going to be high enough to avoid it. And this high enough, that's where you, you calculate the thermal insulation thickness, for example. I wanted to introduce also the, uh, the mu value. Uh, this is a material property and combined or multiplied with the thickness of the material provide the SD value. And SD value is, well, basically the equivalent layer of air which means that uh, to achieve the same resistance to the passage of water, you need to have, uh, instead of air, we have just a thinner material. And uh, it's expressed in meters. We're going to see later on the, the materials, of course, in our product range. I wanted to show you also this image, because this is actually what we really want to avoid. This is an interstitial condensation, so we have actually water inside our <coughs> timber structural element and as we can see maybe here we have also a membrane. That membrane is maybe perfect to see, you cannot see any damage of it, but underneath you cannot see the timber starting to well, decay in a very bad way. So you can have actually timber going really rotten inside a very nice uh, two package membranes and that's really hard to spot. That's why it's really important to design well from the beginning. Another important topic is uh, details, especially details around windows and doors because uh, that's what we want to avoid is to avoid thermal bridges. So as you can see, I'm looking just at this detail here, if the detail is not good then we're gonna have actually a thermal bridge. What does it mean? It means that at some point we're going to have a surface cold enough to have condensation. So we are inside the house, we are having maybe a party and we have a lot of people breathing, so a lot of moisture. Then we start seeing droplets coming down uh, to the window. And that's 
maybe and probably because of thermal bridges. So what can we do to have actually to not to have a thermal bridge? So what's the correct positioning for these layers close to the window, for example? Well, in Italy, we have different way of installing the windows based on the geographical region. So we have some Italians that they like to have internal flush. Internal flush, you can fully open the windows. Uh, the windows are on the inside of the build-up. But also, for some reason, there are also other regions where people want to have central flush. And central flush, you cannot open your windows fully open. I don't understand why people want to have that. But that's something that we have, and also we have external flush, so people are able to open the window, as fully open the window on the outside. All of these three, they have actually, you can see here, some good and bad installation. Uh, the main thing is always to take care of the bridges. So you can see if we have no thermal insulation in one spot, then that's a thermal bridge. And we need to avoid to have a thermal bridge because of condensation problems. So really what we can do is to have the installation into the insulation layer. So to have this red line almost uh, at the same level. This is ideally what we would like to achieve. But also we need to take care of the detail around the windows, for example. We cannot keep it open, like in this image here. This is going to allow moisture traveling from inside and outside with no control. It's not enough to put just the air, the wind layer, the wind layer on the outside. This is not enough because then the moisture that we're creating inside is going into this fissure, into this uh, crack, and maybe it's going to have problem with mold and decay as well. Also, it's not enough to put the air tightness layer, so on the inside, basically for the same reason. So what is best to do is to have actually the three layers on the, on the detail. So we have wind control layer, the blue line. We have the red line, which is the air control layer. And then we have also the cavity full of thermal material, thermal insulation, which is for thermal insulation, but also for uh, noise propagation. So this is what we would like to achieve. And then uh, this slide, just to say that uh, it's really important to keep the thermal insulation as dry as possible. Because if, we, if uh, the thermal insulation is getting wet, then we're going to have a decrease in the performance of the thermal insulation, which is not ideal. And here now we spend some time talking about the materials, tapes and membranes. We're going to start with membranes and actually how to choose a membrane. Well, the choice of a membrane is uh, regulated mainly by the mass per unit area. So, so to speak, it's better to have higher grammature or uh, mass per unit area, especially if you are in a low pitch roof because you're gonna you have to think the workers they are going to walk on the on the membrane it's really important to have something strong enough to allow people to walk repeatedly uh, but of course you have to choose a membrane based on the sd value because we have uh, especially if there was a design uh, looking for specific sd value in your build up then you should stick to that design procedure so you should choose a vapor control layer or a barrier for the warm side or climate control. We're going to see also this one. And you're going to have to choose a briefable membrane. So with SD values for briefable membranes on the wind layer. That's also depending on the climatic zone. So it's really dependent of the geographic, geographical spot where you're living. But also you have to think if uh, on the building site, this membrane and tape, they are going to be exposed to the sun for a certain period. So that's really important also because UV is really, well, uh, attacking our products or the products in general and uh, eliminating or, well, decreasing the performance of our products. Thermal resistance, that depends a lot on where it's going to be placed, the membrane. Uh, you really need to think about thermal resistance, especially if you have a, a steel roof. 
Uh, then a fire reaction, that's something that maybe is asked, really. If you're designing a school, if you're designing a public a building, you really need to think about fire reaction. And that, well, mechanical strength. Mechanical strength is really important for roof, for very high pitch roof. So if it's more than 80%, you think about tensile strength more than 300 Newton every 50 millimeters. And also the nail tearing, it has to be more than 225. These are just guidelines. But really what I wanted to have a look now is the SD value, because we have here, here all our family. We have the Traspir, which goes from, well, I would say 0 to 0 0.3. So this is our breathable membrane. And here we are talking about 30 centimeter of air concentrated in few millimeters. We have the vapor which is our vapor control layer. And this one goes from, well, from 2 to 30. And then we have the barrier, barrier going from 40 to, well, we can uh, go very high here. Barrier is not allowed in water and you moisture to travel. But really what we have spe special, in, in my opinion, is the climate control, which is going to be breathable in, uh, during summer and it's going to be vapor control layer during the winter time. So we have this membrane that is following the seasons. We're gonna start now with the barrier. The barrier, as we said before, is not allowing moisture to travel. So moisture on the inside is staying inside and on the outside it stays just outside. Mm, it's really something that I, I just, uh, from my experience, I see it's uh, commonly used, especially in Europe and Nordic countries. Uh, because, of course, you don't, if you think about it, you don't want to have any kind of vapor going into the building material. So it's better to put just a barrier there. This can be a good reasoning, but in my opinion, it's really important to think about the installation. So, of course, on the design, on the detail, it works really fine. If you do it also on Ibacus, on the software, it works really well but on the installation, on the building site, if you're making a mistake, that's going to be a very, very big damage in a specific spot, uh, as we were saying before. So in my opinion, it's better to avoid using barriers and, uh, or at least to use barriers in a wise way, but not for common houses. For example, I would suggest barriers if you are doing a very highly prefabricated, maybe timber frame. In that case, you are doing all the build-up, you are doing your box in a very controlled environment, so you're placing all the materials. And maybe in that case, it's possible just to then go on site in a good day, weather day, and then you place it. There is no moisture inside, and then there is nothing that really can have to dry on the outside, so it depends. But uh, what it's important to know is that the SD value is really high and you need to consider it in your uh, build-up if you're using it. Here's just some example. Barriers are always on the warm side. So they're always inside the, um, from the inside of the house. And well, if you go on our website, you're gonna see a lot of uh, this layout for specific uh, climatic region as well. As you can see here, we can have a transparent, reflective, we can have a with reinforcing net, uh, we can have a UV resistance, we can have adhesive membranes. So we have a huge range of membranes here. Um, the purpose for me today is just to talk about in general. So I'm not going to show you specific uh, products in this part, but I encourage you to go and have a look on our catalog uh, because it's also full of uh, useful information. Then we're going to talk about the vapor, the vapor control layer. The vapor control layer is what I at least uh, suggest the most, uh, especially for Alpine regions or Nordic countries, but also for Canada, for example, for US, and also for the other side of the world, so uh, Australia and you know New Zealand and many, many other countries. And this is because in this case, it's important to control the vapor going from one, from the uh, traveling from the inside to the outside. We don't want to block it, but we want to control it. And depending on the, on the build up and depending on the geographic, geographical uh, place, 
then you have different SD and of course different thermal layer thicknesses. But this one is allowing at least some moisture to travel. And you can see here that the SD goes from 2 meters to well up to 30 meters. So we have a very wide range. And of course, all these layers are improving the comfort. I'm not saying it, but achieving the goal of these products, it means to have a very comfortable and efficient house. And here as well, we can see actually that it's on the warm side of the buildup. It's, uh, well, you can ask if you have CLT and you want to have CLT visible inside, should you put it or not? Is CLT a vapor control layer? So all these questions can be, they're actually very good questions. And in many, many cases, if you're uh, putting CLT, but if you're using timber as a construction element, you actually want to see timber. So of course you can place this layer always on the warm side, but not on the internal uh, surface of the panel, but just on the other. So the moisture goes first in the timber and then has a control layer there, but it's still a warm place, so we have no condensation. And then we have thermal insulation and then we have the, the wind, the transpire membrane. As you can see here, you, you, you have always a roof and a wall, but basically, on the warm side, we always have barrier or vapor, or we're going to see now clima control. On the cold side, we're going to have always a transpire, a breathable membrane. And now we're going to talk about clima control, this very, very nice membrane that changes uh, just based on the season. So we have uh, actually that uh, depending on the season, we have a high breathable membrane uh, or a control layer. And this is the way it works. So we have a SD value that is uh, actually from point A is decreasing to point B. And this is the winter season because outside is cold and inside is warm. So we have the vapor going from the inside to the outside. In this case, we want to control the vapor. We want to block some of the moisture traveling uh, because of course it's going to be more moisture inside than outside. So what we want to, we want to have SD value higher. So we want to have, we're going to start from 5 meter SD value. And during the winter, this value is going to decrease down to 0 0.2, if I remember well. And uh, in the, at the end, so at the end of the winter, we're going to have a breathable membrane. But that's perfect, because if we have any moisture in our buildup, the summer season is the is the season where we can actually dry our material inside. So what is good to have is to have a breathable membrane so to allow the moisture from into the buildup to dry on the inside of the house. This is specifically good for a flat roof, for example, because flat roof, they have a barrier or bitumen or PVC material on top. So from there, there is no possibility for the moisture to dry on the outside. So we really need to encourage the moisture to dry on the inside. So that's why it's really good to have a breathable membrane during summer. And this is doing this job. So it's a very, very good product that we have. Here again, we have some uh, example of details, but really is the same as for the barrier and the vapor control layer. This layer is on the uh, warm side and on the other side of the thermal material, you always have to put a breathable membrane. So here we can also have this product, the clima control, we can be transparent. Well, transparent is really good so that when you apply the membrane, then you see on the other side, and for example, you see your timber stud, you can put the screw in the correct place. Reinforcement mesh, of course, we can have also added strength to the membrane. Uh, we have UV and temperature resistance. For some of our membranes, we have also certification for sustainability. That's uh, really important for Rotobras to go into a more sustainable way of building. But then we also have the self-adhesive membrane, the adhesive membrane, and also, well, we have uh, double tape membrane and different size. But uh, this is something that you, I encourage you to have a look on our website. Because now we're going to talk about the last one, the breathable membrane, the transpire. 
Traspeer is a membrane that you put on the cold side to protect the, th the thermal insulation. So what you want to have is to, what you want to stop the water, of course, going from the outside in a rainy day to the thermal insulation. But you want to allow the thermal insulation to dry on the outside. And to dry, and it's really close to the ventilation, so that's why the ventilation is actually a good way of building, so that the moisture traveling from the inside to the outside, at some point is going to reach condensation in maybe in the thermal insulation, because the thermal insulation at some point is going to be maybe cold enough. And then we're going to have water, actually. And we said water in the thermal insulation is not good. But then we have our uh, breathable membrane, which is allowing the moisture to go outside, and we have our ventilation. So the ventilation takes care of the moisture. So we're going to have that uh, when it's going to be drier outside, the moisture is going to leave our, our package, and we're going to have a dry thermal insulation again. Really important also to use this membrane when you are on the building site to protect the elements. For example, you can use a membrane, which is also transparent, maybe to protect CLT after the production, for example. And the reason why it should be transparent is that uh, then you can see what's under. So you can use the CLT as it was just timber, but just, uh, I would say, uh, to put a membrane as a defense to the, to the actual material during transportation. But then, of course, you should always put on build this site the vapor control layer and the transpire layer, the breathable layer, not only to achieve comfortable houses, but also to protect during the building site. Because if it's going to rain and you just have your thermal insulation exposed, that's going to take the rain. But if you have your already put on your uh, breathable membrane, the rain is not going inside the thermal insulation. And these are just uh, two examples, really, but again, the breathable membrane, in this case, is on the outside. So it's in the cold side of the, of the build-up. And here, really, we have also the same concept as before. We can have it also reflective and as the barrier as well. And reflective is actually pretty good because we can reflect the heat. So, for example, if you are living in a place where it's really warm outside during summer, you can put it uh, on the outside so that the sun heat is reflected outside. So it's not coming into your house. The same goes if you are actually using a barrier, for example, or a vapor control layer, reflective one. Uh, the heat that you're producing inside the house is going to be reflected inside the house. So uh, by doing that, you can uh, actually increase by 30-35% uh, the thermal efficiency inside the house. But also, really important about breathable membranes is that there are actually two important kinds. So there are microporous membranes and there are monolithic membranes. And well, as you can see in the image here, the more you have the black dots, the better the membrane. So just uh, looking now, I would say that monolithics are a bit better than uh, microporous. Well, this is a big topic and we are also having a, well, a, a practical exercise here to just demonstrate the difference between them. But it's really important to see that actually the breathability, so the SD value, can be really the equivalent between these two membranes. The main difference is the way you produce the film inside. So it uh, can be just uh, mechanically joined, creating microporous. So that's uh, the microporous one. And these holes are small enough to not to allow the water drops to go on the other side. So it's stopping water drops. But it's uh, big enough to allow the vapor molecules to go on the other side. So actually, vapor can travel, like in the image here. Vapor can travel, but water cannot. On the other side, monolithic one is a different material. It's a polymeric chain, and it's totally different. The vapor cross this uh, layer with chemical reaction. 
so there are no holes, no passages. And this is why it's a bit, it's, better, uh, it's a better product. But both of them can work really well, and you should just be aware of what you should or you should not do in presence of a microporous or a monolithic membrane. Well, this is just to sum up. So we have uh, barriers, we have vapor control layer, and we have breathable, the Traspir. We have the clima control, which is in between the breathable and the vapor control layer. Also here to sum up what you should really look for when you're choosing a membrane is the mass, is the SD value, is of course the climatic zone where you're living, is the thermal uh, resistance and the UV uh, exposition, is the fire reaction, and also the mechanical strength. These are the main ones, but then of course there are other things maybe more commercial also, the width of the, of the membrane and the roll and the product itself. This slide just to show that we are actually experimenting on our products. And uh, this one, for example, is on the roof of the Rotoblast main her headquarter. And here we are testing monolithic and microporous membranes. Here we are doing some fire test. And here where we are just uh, looking at the adhesiveness of some tapes. Which is the next topic? I'm going to be very short here because we're just going to see how, how the composition really of a tape. So what we're going to have, we're going to have a, from the outside, we're going to have a support where basically you have the name of the producer. Then you have primer and adhesive and maybe you have some reinforcing layer and then you have adhesive again. That adhesive is the one that is going to be attached to other products, to other materials. And then you have the liner. The liner is just uh, uh, basically protecting the glue not to stick around, so you can actually remove it. We can also have tapes without the liner, which is more sustainable. But really, here is a, a matter of uh, adhesion. And we want to have a material, a glue, that is actually adhering well to different kind of material. So depending on the material, if you want to put the tape between two membranes, the glue is different as if you want to put just between, well, very porous material as timber, for example. But then it's also really about the temperature of application. So again, the climatic zone where you are installing these products, the UV exposition, of course, and uh, this is going to compromise maybe the durability of the product. And really here it's important to understand adhesion versus cohesion. Adhesion is uh, well what you have between your tape and another material. Cohesion is inside the tape. So it's the force of the tape not to break open, basically. Uh, but all this is uh, actually reported in our catalog. And uh, we have many, many products also in here. We have for cold temperature, we have for uh, inside, outside, we have ones that can be plastered, so very, very uh, huge selection. And here just a few images to just to show uh, what can be done. And actually really important to see that uh, well on the roof we have the membrane, we have to seal between membranes, so we have also the tape. And, but also because we're going to keep building on the roof, we're going to put screw maybe in, into, into those uh, rafters, so we have to put also a tape that is going to seal the holes. And that's really important. We need to seal all kind of holes that we're creating. So we need to have continuity in our membrane. We need to have continuity in our air tightness and wind tightness layer. And the last one that I wanted to see just uh, if the tape is not working there just because it's complicated maybe to put it on, then we have of course our kind of sealant, which can be foam, for example. Foam is really good for kind of difficult shapes or round shapes. And, but uh, for window sealing, especially for CLT prefabrication, uh, I think it's really easy to, instead of putting foam bit around the window, it's really easy to put just uh, expand tapes. These tapes are just uh, easy to apply, and uh, that's at least what I recommend normally. Easy to apply, they take care of thermal and acoustic insulation, and then you just have to put the tape on one side and the other. 
to achieve a good detail. Because at the end, it's all about good detail, really. So, thank you for your attention. I, I, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this time together and see you on the next one.